Hey everybody, welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we are going to talk about how the financial statements link together. So the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. How does that work? How are they all linked together? Okay, so just like we said at the beginning, we are going to talk through how the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement link together. And as we go along, we're going to show you some examples uh, and a template to how that actually happens in Microsoft Excel. It's easier when you can visualize it. So how the financials work together, the statements are very much dependent on one another. And if you really want to know how to analyze a company and how financial statements work, you will have to know how this linking works. It's critical. So if we start with the income statement, the income statement feeds both the balance sheet and the statement of cash flows. So let's look at these first two line items here with net income feeding to the cash flow statement and then depreciation or non-cash items flowing to the cash flow statement. So, so as we just mentioned, net income right here flows directly to the first line of your indirect cash flow statement. So you can see this equals H2, and here's H2. So net income is the first line of an indirect method cash flow statement. And your second line item is depreciation, which if you look, that's in cell H3 above. That is also on your income statement. And you can go back and read our overview of the indirect cash flow statement and how that works but depreciation is non-cash. So that's why we add that back and that's why it's critical to be linked down to the cash flow statement. The next two items in the income statement are net income right here again, except this time it's how it links to the balance sheet. And what it does is it helps you calculate your retained earnings. And then you've got dividends and that flows to your cash flow and your balance sheet. So that's both your CFFA, your cash flow from financing activities, and your retained earnings. So let's look at how that works. Okay, so your net income, as we mentioned, is right here. And how does that interact with our retained earnings? So if you see your retained earnings, our last year's retained earnings, as these roll forward, and then what is your incremental earnings? Well, it's really, what did you make net income this year? minus any dividends that you paid out. And in this example, there are no dividends, but retained earnings is driven by net income. Okay, you might at this point be confused or you might just be bored, but leave comments and questions and I can try to help with any uh, thing that isn't clear. I would be happy to make uh, another video to help give some more detail on anything. So leave questions, comments. If you like what you see so far, make sure you like and subscribe, and then we will move on to the balance sheet. Okay, so now the balance sheet and the cash flow statement, they really go hand in hand because the balance sheet is just so important in constructing the cash flow statement when you're using the indirect method. So we'll look at this and then we'll skip to our Excel to show how this works. But Almost every line item on the balance sheet plays into the cash flow statement. So you've got your cash balance, which you're going to use to calculate what your end of period cash is. You've got your AR, inventory and AP, your working capital accounts, which you'll use the change to get to your CFOA number. Property, plant and equipment, um, you can use the cash flow statement. You can derive cash flow from investing activities, although this isn't going to tie perfectly like many of these other accounts, because there are other variables that exist. Uh, you've got debt, long-term and short-term, which is gonna help you derive your cash flow from financing activities. And then lastly, you've got equity, which will help you uh, derive your cash flow from financing activities when you have with stock and equity. So, uh, with and as we mentioned, the statement of cash flows is almost entirely made up of the balance sheet. So. Let's dive right into the Excel. 
So this video almost becomes a how to do a cash flow statement because we're going to use the balance sheet so heavily. So we mentioned that the income statement link on the cash flow statement is net income coming down and depreciation. So these first two line items come from depreciation and then the rest of your cash flow statement is primarily derived from changes in these balance sheet accounts. So First, we have working capital. This line is just a sum. But essentially what we're doing for AR, inventory, and AP is we're looking at what the change between years are between accounts receivable and inventory and accounts payable. So if you look at this accounts receivable number, you can see that your accounts receivable actually went up, which means you did not collect as much cash as you did last year. So you've reduced your cash, cash collection, which is a pressure to your cash flow from operating activities, which is why you see a negative 47 here. And this particular example has everything going in the wrong direction for cash in your working capital accounts. So you start with your net income, you work down, and you've got your CFOA. Next, your purchases from property, plant, and equipment. Now, this is where, when we mentioned there are multiple variables, this is just your purchases. So there isn't necessarily a direct tie point to the balance sheet um, above, but it's a subset of a balance sheet account. And lastly, if you're cash flow from financing activities. So 2020 is not a good example. So if you look at your increase or decrease in debt, for instance, what it's going to do is same we do with our working capital accounts. It's looking for your change in debt. So this is short-term debt. This is long-term debt. You can see there's no change here, but you do, however, have a change between your long-term debt where your long-term debt is going down, which inherently means you paid off some of your long-term debt, which would be a cash outflow. So down here, you see a negative $1,000. So there are two additional checks you can do. These are really overall financial statement checks, um, but this would make sure that you have your linking right, most likely. So you wanna make sure your assets equal your liabilities plus owner's equity. Everybody who can understand anything in this video knows that that's the accounting equation, and that's something that has to hold true, but that's a check. Uh, we always need to make sure we do. And then we've got, uh, you, what you can do is you can look at your cash balance on the balance sheet from prior year, plus your change in cash in the current year, and that should equal the cash balance sheet on your the cash balance on your balance sheet in the current year. So let's look at that real quick. Okay, so these checks that you'd want to do, and you can build them in, like we actually have this one built into the sheet. But what you want to do is say do your total assets 8507 equal your liabilities plus shareholders equity. So that you can see the sum down here is 8507. So those tie. The other thing you'd do is you'd have an official cash balance at the end of the year, which here is 43,271. And what you'd like to do is check to make sure if your cash at the beginning of last year, which is 38,102, plus your change in cash, so your cash flow statement change, if those two equal that same balance, so 43,271 and 43,271. So those two tie, it says you're okay. So you know that you tie out. That doesn't tell you everything is perfect, but that should give you a little bit of reassurance that your model is functioning correctly. Linking financial statements together is complicated, but once you get the concept, it makes a lot of sense. And once you understand that concept, financial statements just begin to, to make more sense to you and you're able to analyze them easier. So. Stay at it. If you have questions or comments, leave them. We'd be happy to do another video to try to help explain. But if this was helpful, please subscribe, like the video. If you really don't like the video, give it a thumbs down, but I'd love for you to give click the, click the thumbs up and like it. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Good luck and let us know how it goes.